the Gita is about death as much as it is about life. It is about dying well as much as it is about living well. Both these are aspects of the same coin. They follow each other in a circle. And if we know how to do one well, the other follows spontaneously. The other is a byproduct. Now, death is best represented on the battlefield. The battlefield represents everything that encompasses life and death. It represents all our energies. It represents the energies our life can take. Kuru Chetra is the field upon which all of man's aspirations, all of man's virtues, all of man's failures collect together. His negative energies, his positive energies, his aspiration to be victorious, his willingness to kill others and his willingness to show compassion towards others as Arjun is doing. Hence, the entire circle of man is represented on the field of battle. And that is why Krishna has chosen it to give this ultimate teaching, this ultimate gospel to Arjuna. He could have given a gospel in another setting. There are so many times he and Arjuna have been together in the palace as friends. The situation could have been more conducive, the situation could have been more comfortable. But no, Arjun is going to receive the sermon in the most uncomfortable situation because it is a question of life and death. And it is only when our spiritual search becomes a question of life and death that we truly understand things. Before that, we are very lukewarm. Before that, it is not really important. All spiritual questions are reduced to entertainment. That's why you'll see people coming and going from ashrams, coming and going to gurus. The lack of seriousness is often evident because there's nothing to lose. You can simply sit in a satsang, you can simply sit in a gathering, enjoy yourself. There is no question of life and death. Without the question of death, the question of living truly well cannot truly be answered. And this is why Krishna has made it a point to address both aspects, the material aspect and the spiritual aspect. He does not tell Arjun to just go on a spiritual search. No, he tells him to remain in the world as a warrior. He tells him to remain as he is, but with a feeling of balance, with a feeling of calmness, with a feeling of tranquility, with a foul feeling of coolness. So he tells him to face death with this feeling. And with these attributes, all of us are to face death with balance, with inner coolness, with an inner tranquility, with inner calmness. That is the whole secret of dying well. So we can say that dying well is a question of deep harmony. It is a question of finding a meditative calmness, even in the midst of the most difficult circumstances. Death itself is the most difficult circumstance. Moving towards death itself is the most difficult circumstance. But if within that circumstance, we can attain to inner tranquility, then you can say we have really achieved something in the material and the mystical sphere. Then you can say that we have lived a successful life. Then you can say that our life 
has truly had an immense joy, an immense ecstasy, and nothing has been able to disturb it. So, the idea of tranquility amongst chaos is the idea of the Gita. It's the central idea of the Gita. And in that way, it is truly exceedingly important because life is a series of crises one after the other. The world is in the midst of crises one after the other. Our society is, we are individually, our relationships are, our work situations are one crisis after the other. So the Gita is all about living through crisis, but living through crisis in a manner which is faced with a feeling of coolness within, faced with an attitude of spirituality within. This is what makes the Gita very interesting and this is what makes the Gita truly practical. It works. It is not about preaching about a certain God to people who are at one's mercy almost. You see, this is what preachers do. This is what gurus do. You talk down to people who are listening to you with rapt attention. But here on the battlefield, that is not the case. Arjun is not looking at Krishna initially as a guru so much as a mentor, a friend. Only later on in the Gita, he discovers the profound aspects of Krishna more and more, the cosmic aspects of Krishna more and more. Before that, he's simply interested in the question of life and death and not so much interested in the question of God ultimate existence, the absolute, ultimate truth, and so on, which are the primary religious questions. The innermost core of his being is interested in living and dying. This is the basic crux of his questioning. This is the basic crux of his search to address what it means to die, to kill. That is really the position he is coming from. And because he is coming from that position, he is able to find truly meaningful answers from the Lord. And those meaningful answers really at their essence have as their root the gospel of fearlessness, to move beyond fear of death. And how do we truly move beyond the fear of death? We move beyond it only through inner collectedness, inner harmony and so on. This makes the Gita truly multidimensional. It gives us the gift of understanding not only how to live well, but ultimately how to die well. And that is the entire circle of life itself. <laughs>